Okay, so welcome back to this next video in which we are discussing ATP binding cassette transporters or ABC transporters. Okay, so we've talked about the basic principles of the difference between a transporter and a channel. We've also discussed the different types of transporters. We've discussed passive transporters, and then we've discussed the two types of active transporter, primary active transporters and secondary active transporters. Okay, so all of the ATP binding cassette transporters are going to be primary active transporters. They are going to use ATP hydrolysis to move solute molecules up uh, their electrochemical gradients. Okay, right, so uh, let's now talk about the 49 different uh, ABC transporters then. Okay, right, so the 49 different ABC transporters uh, are going to uh, move molecules either into or out of the cell. So they will either be importers and exporters, and when they move molecules into or out of the cell, they will hydrolyze ATP. And generally, it's two molecules of ATP that are going to be hydrolyzed for every one molecule of solute that is either moved into the cell or out of the cell. Okay, and they move all sorts of different solutes in and out of the cell. So, for instance, amino acids are moved by uh, ATP binding cassette transporters. Proteins can be moved by certain ATP binding cassette transporters. And I should emphasize that all of these different uh, 49 uh, ABC transporters, they're all going to have different targets, basically. The molecules which they're going to move will be different, basically. Okay, so um, let's ha now talk about the way that we categorize the 49 different ABC transporters into different families then. So there are seven different families of ABC transporters, okay? They're called ABC, so ATP binding cassette, and then you have A, okay? So the first family is the ABCA family. The second family is the ABCB family. The third family is the ABCC family. So we use letters to denote the families rather than numbers. Okay. The fourth family is ABCD. The fifth family is ABCE. The sixth family is ABCF. And then the seventh family is ABCG. Okay, so uh, these are the seven different families that we categorize the ABC transporters into. Now let's discuss how many members you have within each family. Okay, so within the A family you have 12 members. Okay, so to give an example, you have ABCA1. Okay, then you have ABCA2. Then you have ABCA3. Then you have ABCA4, and it continues on all the way up to ABCA10. Then there is a slight blip in the naming. There is no ABCA11, okay? And then it goes on ABCA12, and then ABCA13, okay? So you do overall, therefore, have 12 of these uh, ABC transporters, which are in the A family. Okay, it goes up to 13 because there's no ABCA11. Okay, but apart from that one little blip in the naming of the uh, ABCA family ABC transporters, it's a very nice naming system there. Okay, right, let's now talk about ABCB family. Okay, so this one's just perfect. You have ABCB1. And then it goes on all the way up to 11, basically. So it goes on all the way up to ABCB11 without a single blip. So you have ABCB1, ABCB2, ABCB3, ABCB4, ABCB5, all the way up to ABCB11. Okay, right. Now let's turn our attention to ABCC family. Okay, again, this one has a beautiful naming system. There is ABCC1 all the way up to ABCC13. Okay, so again, there's ABCC1, ABCC2, ABCC3, ABCC4, all the way up to ABCC13. Okay, 
Then let's turn our attention to the ABCD family. So there is ABCD1, okay, all the way up to ABCD4. Okay, so there's ABCD1, ABCD2, ABCD3, ABCD4, and that's the end of the ABCD family. Okay, then for the ABCE family, there's only one member within the ABCE family. Okay, and this is ABCE1. Okay, so that's the only member of the ABCE family. Then for the ABCF family, there is ABCF1 all the way up to ABCF3, so I might even dare to write this one out. So then we've got ABCF1, ABCF2, ABCF3, okay, and then finally G's naming system is just a little bit more all over the place. Okay, right, so for the G family there is then ABCG1, okay, then there is an ABCG2, Okay, but then there is no ABCG3, and then it goes on all the way up to ABCG4. Okay, then you have ABCG5, and then finally, the last one is ABCG8. Uh, okay, right, so now that is all 49 members of the ABC transporter family that are known within humans. Okay, so let's just make sure we have 49. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, then we have 4 here, that takes us up to 13, another 13 here, 26, another 11 here, 37, and then 12 here, that takes us up to 49. So indeed, we do have 49 ABC transporters within humans. Okay, now, let's talk about some important examples that are within these uh, different families. Okay, so an extremely important example that we're going to talk a lot about later on in this video is ABCB1. Okay, so the first member of the ABCB family. Okay, so this has another name. This protein or this gene, which will obviously code for a protein, is also called P glycoprotein. Okay, and it has another name as well. It's also known as MDR1, and that stands for the multi-drug resistance protein 1. Okay, so MD stands for multi-drug, then the R stands for resistance, okay, and then we've got protein, and then it's 1, so multi-drug resistance protein 1, or the MDR1. Okay, right, so this is probably one of the most heavily studied uh, members of the ATP binding cassette transporter family, okay, and the reason is that um, it can be found to be overexpressed in cancer cells uh, within certain tissues of the body, okay, so for instance, uh, it can be found overexpressed within liver cancer cells. It can also be found overexpressed within kidney cancer cells and also the colon, so the large intestine. Okay, so if you've got um, s these forms of cancer and you've got overexpression of uh, this specific ABC transporter, it's not good, okay, because liver, kidney, colon cancer, uh, which overexpress MDR1, uh, become drug resistant basically because if the cancer cell puts loads of these ABCB1 uh, proteins on its surface, okay, so let's put loads of these all over, basically this transporter is very good at transporting certain chemotherapy drugs out of the cancer cell and therefore stopping the chemotherapy from being able to attack the cancer cell. Okay, so what are some examples of drugs uh, which are thrown out of the cell by the ABCB1? Well, examples include vimblastine, okay, which is an antimitotic drug, and then also doxorubicin, which is an intercalator, okay? So these are very, very powerful anti-cancer drugs, uh, which usually are extremely effective. Doxorubicin is a 
truly cytotoxic drug. Uh, so it's, um, they're usually very, very powerful at killing cancer cells. But if your liver, kidney, or colon cancer cell has got overexpression of the ABCB1 uh, protein on its surface, then these transporters can uh, throw these chemotherapy drugs out of the cell and thereby protect the cancer cell from uh, the um, drug. Okay, so it's not a good sign, basically, if your uh, cancer cells uh, have overexpression of the multi-drug resistance protein 1. Okay, and you might think, well, come on, pharmacologists, find some sort of drug that will inhibit these transporters. But then, of course, you must remember, uh, remember the COX-2 selective inhibitors and how badly that all went. Okay, so these things, although at the moment I've painted you a picture of how awful they are, that they're involved in uh, resistance to chemotherapy uh, in these liver, kidney, and colon cancer cells, okay, but you have to ask what's their function in physiology as well, and therefore what would we destroy if we actually did make a pharmacological inhibitor of um, the MDR1? Well. ABCB1 or MDR1 or P glycoprotein, whatever you want to call it, is also on the uh, endothelial cells of the blood brain barrier, and it's important basically in uh, chucking horrible molecules out of the brain basically. It is protecting your brain from horrible drugs that are in your blood as well. Okay, so horrible chemicals, maybe I'll refine that too, which are in your blood. Okay, so if you um, inhibited this, potentially you'd start to get certain horrible uh, neural side effects. Uh, so it might not be a good idea to inhibit this. But there are there is certainly research into whether inhibiting this would have a beneficial effect for people with uh, drug-resistant liver, kidney, or colon cancer. Okay, right. Another example of one which is involved in transporting drugs out of cancer cells uh, is ABCC1 as well, the first member of the ABC family. Okay, so uh, actually I'll go over onto a new page rather than shoving it in down there. Okay, so we'll look at ABCC1 now. Okay, so basically ABCC1 is also found overexpressed in certain uh, drug-resistant cancer cells. Now, it's different types of cancer that you generally find ABCC1 overexpressed within. You find it within drug-resistant prostate cancer cells, in drug-resistant breast cancer cells, and also within drug-resistant lung cancer cells. Okay, and it's the same principle that these cancer cells have overexpressed ABCC1 uh, and are resistant to the drug. Okay, uh, so we know that one of the core features of cancerous cells is that they're genetically unstable. Okay, you've got this huge population of cells that are undergoing mutations at rates that are silly compared to normal cells. Okay, so when you chuck chemotherapy at cancer cells, uh, then it's almost um, unavoidable that one of them will just happen to get a mutation that means that it becomes resistant to the drug, okay? And maybe one of them could get a mutation in the promoter region of one of these transporters, which then leads to upregulation of the transporter, and then, of course, it will survive. And then the other feature of cancer cells is that they divide very rapidly, so it will divide them very rapidly. And even though all of the other cancer cells are dying around it, all that will mean is that it divides more and more rapidly, creates a new population of cancer cells, which are then resistant to your drug. So you end up with a tumour that is fully resistant to a drug. Okay, uh, so that's how uh, these cancer uh, tissues actually do develop the resistance to uh, the drug molecule. Okay, so they don't just have this before you've even exposed them to the treatment. Okay, right. Uh, so, another important example, which I'm not going to say much about, is ABCC7. Okay, so ABCC7 is more commonly known as CFTR, okay, which stands for the cystic, that's the C, and then F is fibrosis, 
and then T is transmembrane conductance, okay, and then R is for regulator, okay, so this is the cystic fibrosis transmembrane conductance regulator, and this is the uh, ABC transporter that is extremely important in cystic fibrosis and in which you have mutations in cystic fibrosis, uh, the main example being delta, sorry, delta F508. Okay, uh, now this one is a little bit strange for an ABC transporter because it's been modified a little bit and now it's actually more like a channel as well, so it's a very odd protein. It does retain transporter activity, but it's also a chloride ion channel, okay, but it's an ATP gated chloride ion channel, so you need to have ATP in order for it to actually open, okay, uh, so it's a little bit of an odd example of an ABC transporter. But it's certainly a very, very famous example of an ABC transporter. Okay, right. So we'll call it there for this video. And in the next video, what we'll do is we'll turn our attention to the structure of these ABC transporters. And then we'll look at their function.